The Svatantrika Prasangika distinction is a doctrinal distinction made within Tibetan Buddhism between two stances regarding the use of logic and the meaning of conventional truth within the presentation of Madhyamaka. Svatantrika is a category of Madhyamaka viewpoints attributed primarily to the 6th century Indian scholar Bhavivaka. Bhavivaka criticized Buddhapalita's abstinence from syllogistic reasoning in his commentary on Nagarjuna. Following the example of the influential logician Dignaga, Bhavivaka used autonomous syllogistic reasoning svatantra syllogisms in the explanation of Madhyamaka. To have a common ground with essentialist opponents, and make it possible to use syllogistic reasoning in discussion with those essentialists, Bhavivaka argued that things can be said to exist conventionally according to characteristics. This makes it possible to take the mere object as the point of departure for the discussion on inherent existence. From there, it is possible to explain how these things are ultimately empty of inherent existence. Prasangika views are based on Kandrakirti's critique of Bhavivaka, arguing for a sole reliance on prasanga, logic consequence, a method of reductio ad absurdum which is used by all Madhyamikas, using syllogisms to point out the absurd and impossible logical consequences of holding essentialist views. According to Kandrakirti, the mere object can only be discussed if both parties perceive it in the same way. As a consequence, according to Kandrakirti, Svatantrika reasoning is impossible in a debate, since the opponents argue from two irreconcilable points of view, namely a mistaken essentialist perception, and a correct non-essentialist perception. This leaves no ground for a discussion starting from a similarly perceived object of discussion, and also makes impossible the use of syllogistic reasoning to convince the opponent. Kandrakirti's works had no influence on Indian and early Tibetan Madhyamaka, but started to rise to prominence in Tibet in the 12th century. Tsongkhapa (1357–1419), the founder of the Gelugpa school and the most outspoken proponent of the distinction, followed Kandrakirti in his rejection of Bhavavivaka's arguments. According to Tsongkhapa, the Svatantrikas do negate intrinsic nature ultimately, but accept that things conventionally have intrinsic character or intrinsic nature. Tsongkhapa, commenting on Kandrakirti, says that he refute s essential or intrinsic nature even conventionally. For Tsongkhapa, as well as for the Karma Kagyu school, the differences with Bhavavivaka are of major importance. Established by Lama Tsongkhapa, Kandrakirti's view replaced the Yogacara Madhyamika approach of Santaraksita, who synthesized Madhyamaka, Yogacara, and Buddhist logic in a powerful and influential synthesis called Yogacara Madhyamika. Santaraksita established Buddhism in Tibet, and his Yogacara Madhyamika was the primary philosophic viewpoint until the 12th century, when the works of Kandrakirti were first translated into Tibetan. In this synthesis, conventional truth or reality is explained and analyzed in terms of the Yogacara system, while the ultimate truth is presented in terms of the Madhyamaka system. While Santaraksita's synthesis reflects the final development of Indian Madhyamaka and post-dates Kandrakirti, Tibetan doxographers ignored the nuances of Santaraksita's synthesis, grouping his approach together with Bhavivaka's, due to their usage of syllogistic reasonings to explain and defend Madhyamaka. After the 17th century civil war in Tibet and the Mongol intervention which put the Gelugpa school in the center of power, Tsongkhapa's views dominated Tibetan Buddhism until the 20th century. The Rime movement revived alternate teachings, providing alternatives to Tsongkhapa's interpretation, and reintroducing Santaraksita's nuances. For the Sakya and Nyingma schools, which participated in the Rime movement, the Svatantrika Prasangika distinction is generally viewed to be of lesser importance. For these schools, the key distinction between these viewpoints is whether one works with assertions about the ultimate nature of reality, or if one refrains completely from doing so. If one works with assertions, then that is a Svatantrika approach. Refraining from doing so is a Prasangika approach. Indian Madhyamaka Madhyamaka originated with the works of Nagarjuna c. 150 c. 250 CE, and his commentators. The Svatantrika Prasangika distinction can be traced to the following three commentators Buddhapalita CE, a minor author in India, whom Tibetan tradition credits as the founder of the Prasangika school, was an early adopter of syllogistic and consequentialist methods in his writings, although of a particularly limited form. Bhavivaka c. 500 c. 
578 CE, who was influenced by the developing Buddhist logic initiated by Dignaga c. 480 c. 540 CE, and used syllogistic reasoning in his commentary on Nagarjuna. He did so to catch up with these developments in Buddhist logic, and prevent Madhyamaka from becoming obsolete. His criticisms of Buddhapalita are retrospectively imagined as the foundation of the Svatantrika school. Kandrakirti c. 600 c. 650 CE, who defended Buddhapalita against Bhavyavivaka. Although he attracted almost no following and made no impact on the development of the Madhyamaka tradition. In India, he became regarded by the Tibetan tradition after 1200 CE as an important proponent of Prasangika. Santaraksita (725–788), who synthesized Madhyamaka, Yogacara, and Buddhist logic in a powerful and influential synthesis called Yogacara Madhyamika. He established Buddhism in Tibet, and his Yogacara Madhyamika was the primary philosophic viewpoint established there, which reigned superior until the 12th century, when the works of Kandrakirti were first translated into Tibetan. The name Prasangika is derived from Prasanga, a method of logical inquiry which deconstructs the opponent's argument in debate through the use of unwanted logical consequences. It arises from Bhavavivaka's criticism that Buddhapalita ought not to have relied solely on reductio ad absurdum argumentation. Hence the name, Prasangika, from Prasanga, consequence, but ought to have set forth, autonomous, Svatantra, syllogisms of his own. <laughs> Bhavivaka Bhavivaka c. 500 c. 578 CE argued that autonomous syllogistic reasoning was required when explaining or commenting on Nagarjuna's teachings on voidness or essencelessness. To be able to use syllogistic reasoning, both parties need to share a common object of discussion at the conventional level. While the various opponents have different opinions on the specifics of their teachings, the mere objects or mere forms are commonly appearing to both parties. Enjoy ing a certain existence according to their characteristics. Bhavivaka criticized Buddhapalita for merely repeating Nagarjuna's ad absurdum approach in his commentary, instead of clarifying Nagarjuna's teachings. According to Bhavivaka, syllogistic reasoning could be used for the sake of clarification. Bhavivaka further argued that Buddhapalita only showed the logical consequences, and incoherence, of the Samhya's views on causation and inherent existence, but failed to address their arguments against Buddhist critiques. Furthermore, simply negating the opponent's view, without positing one's own position, leaves room for doubt in the opponent's mind, and is unwarranted. To facilitate the possibility of discussing Madhyamaka with opponents, Bhavivaka made a provisional division of the two truths, accepting that phenomena exist according to their characteristics. Bhavivaka made a further distinction in his treatment of ultimate truth or reality. Ultimate truth or reality transcends discursive thought, and cannot be expressed in words. To be able to talk about it anyway, and distinguish it from relative truth or reality, Bhavivaka makes a distinction between the world transcending, or ultimate truth in itself, which is ineffable and beyond words, and the pure worldly wisdom, or approximate truth, which can be talked about and points to the ultimate truth in itself. Which has to be personally experienced. Dreyfus and McClintock observe that Bhavavivaka was more influential in Indian Madhyamaka than was Kandrakirti. In this regard, Bhavavivaka should probably be seen as quite successful. Apart from Kandrakirti and Jayananda, nearly all other Indian Madhyamikas were to follow in his footsteps and embrace autonomous arguments as important tools in their endeavors to establish the supremacy of the Madhyamaka view. Kandrakirti Kandrakirti c. 600 c. 650 CE had little impact during his lifetime. The first commentary on his Madhyamakavatara was written in India in the 11th century, more than 300 years after his death. In the 12th century, his works were translated in Tibetan and became highly influential. Kandrakirti rejected Bhavivaka's criticism of Buddhapalita and his use of independent logic. According to Kandrakirti, the mere object can only be discussed if both parties perceive it in the same way. 
According to Kandrakirti, this is impossible, since the opponents argue from two irreconcilable points of view, namely a mistaken essentialist perception, and a correct non-essentialist perception. This leaves no ground for a discussion starting from a similarly perceived object of discussion, and also makes impossible the use of syllogistic reasoning to convince the opponent. According to Chandrakirti, without a conventionally appearing set of characteristics to designate upon, the Svatantrika would not be able to establish a syllogism. Chandrakirti also rejected Bhavivaka's argument that autonomous arguments should be used in commentaries to clarify the original text, noting that Nagarjuna himself, in his auto commentary on the Vigrahavyavartani, also didn't use autonomous arguments. Chandrakirti rejected the use of autonomous arguments, for the very reason that they imply the acceptance however provisional of entities. According to Chandrakirti, this mode of thinking is a subtle form of grasping at inherent existence, one's mind is still searching for some way to hold on to an essence, self, or identity for conventionally perceived objects. For Chandrakirti, there is no use in explaining the relative truth in any philosophical system. The relative truth consists simply of phenomena as we observe them, the unanalyzed constituents of the common consensus. Quote, the only aim of consequential arguments is to introduce the mind to the direct knowledge of emptiness, not an intellectual understanding of it, making no concessions to the spiritually unprepared. Kandrakirti's criticism was part of a wider rejection of the logico-epistemological tradition of Dignaga, which he regarded as a misguided attempt to find philosophical completeness, and a sense of intellectual security that is antithetical to the fundamental insight of Madhyamaka. Kandrakirti did not reject the use of logic, but it served to demarcate the limits of discursive thought. In the absence of any agreement between Madhyamikas and substantialists, prasanga is the best approach. To indicate the ultimate without making statements that compromise or obscure their own position, since the use of autonomous arguments implies the acceptance of real entities, even if only provisional, they should not be used. <laughs> Santaraksita Born and educated in India, Santaraksita came to the Tibetan Empire at the instigation of King Trisong Detson after Niang Tingzan Zongpo had encouraged the king to make the invitation. Santaraksita came to Tibet sometime before 767 CE. He oversaw the construction of the first Buddhist monastery at Sami in 787 CE, ordained the first monastics there, had Indian Buddhist texts brought to Tibet, and started the first translation project. He also advised the king to invite Pamamsambhava to come to Tibet. He was also instrumental in the coming of Kamalasila to Tibet, who participated in the so-called Council of Lhasa, which, according to Tibetan tradition, led to the defeat of the Chinese Chan monk Mohayan, and the establishment of Indian Buddhism as the norm for Tibetan Buddhism. Santaraksita synthesized Madhyamaka, Yogacara, and the logico epistemological tradition of Dignaga and Dharmakirti. In this synthesis, conventional truth or reality is explained and analyzed in terms of the Yogacara system, while the ultimate truth is presented in terms of the Madhyamaka system. Tibetan Madhyamaka Divisions prior to the distinction When Buddhism was established in Tibet, the primary philosophic viewpoint established there was that of Santaraksita (725–788), a synthesis of Madhyamaka, Yogacara, and Buddhist logic called Yogacara Madhyamika. A common distinction of Madhyamaka teachings was given by Jainanasutra Wiley, Yishis Sde, 8th-9th centuries, a student of Santaraksita. Satrantika Madhyamika, including Bhavivaka, and Yogacara Madhyamaka, including Santaraksita, Kamalasila, and Haribhadra, the difference lies in their acceptance or rejection of extramental phenomena on the conventional level. While Bhavavivaka considered material phenomena at the conventional level as to be existent outside the mind, he applied Satrantika terminology to describe and explain them. Santaraksita rejected this approach, denying the extramental status of phenomena appearing within the sphere of conventional truth. 
Instead, he saw conventional phenomena as manifestations of the mind. In line with the Yogacara approach, Khandrakirti's works were known in Tibet as early as the 8th century, but specifically in connection with the logical tradition. When Khandrakirti's Yuktishashtika was translated by Yesheda Jainanasutra and some others, the Prasangika Svatantrika distinction was possibly invented by the Tibetan translator Pa T. Shab Nyi Ma Gregs, using the terms Rang Rgyud Pa and Thal, which were Sanskritized by modern scholars as Svatantrika and Prasangika. According to Dreyfus and McClintock, Tibetan scholars themselves state that the distinction is a Tibetan creation that was retroactively applied in an attempt to bring clarity and order to the study of contemporary Indian Madhyamaka interpretations." Later Gelugpa scholars as well as Nyingmapas, after Khandrakirti's works were translated in Tibetan in the 12th century, considered both of the above to constitute subdivisions of Svatantrika, however, under the names of Satrantika Svatantrika Madhyamaka Yogacara Svatantrika Madhyamaka. Those various teachers, and their approaches were grouped together due to their usage of syllogistic reasonings to explain and defend Madhyamaka. In disregard of the philosophical nuances of Santaraksita's approach, a related doctrinal topic of profound disagreement is between Rangtong Shentong, which concerns the nature of ultimate truth as empty of a self or essence, or as constituting an absolute reality which is truly existing and empty of any other, transitional phenomena. <laughs> Lama Tsongkhapa and Gelugpa's dominant view Initially, this new distinction based on Khandrakirti's Prasanapada met with fierce resistance in Tibet, but gained in popularity and was strongly supported by Je Tsongkhapa he became the most outspoken defender of the Svatantrika Prasangika distinction, arguing that, the two subschools are separated by crucial philosophical differences, including a different understanding of emptiness and of conventional reality. Tsongkhapa was a powerful personality with a large following, but he too met with a strong resistance, especially within the Sakya school to which he originally belonged. His critics rejected his interpretation as, inadequate, newfangled, and unsupported by tradition." According to those critics, Tsongkhapa had "...greatly exaggerated the divergence of view." Tsongkhapa's view became the dominant view in the beginning of the 17th century, when Gusri Khan ended the civil war in central Tibet, putting the fifth Dalai Lama in command of the temples in Tibet. This gave the Gelugpa school a strong political power, and the means to effectively ban the writings of Tsongkhapa's critics. Tsongkhapa's view For Tsongkhapa, the Svatantrika Prasangika distinction centers around the usage of autonomous syllogistic reasoning to convince opponents of the Madhyamaka point of view, and the implications of the establishment of conventional existence according to characteristics. Tsongkhapa objected against Bhavivaka's use of autonomous syllogistic reasoning in explaining voidness or essencelessness. To be able to use syllogistic reasoning, both parties need to have a common ground onto which those syllogistic reasonings can be applied. This common ground is the shared perception of the object whose emptiness of inherent existence is to be established. According to Bhavivaka, this shared perception is possible because the perceived objects are mentally imputed labeled based on characteristic marks which distinguishes them from other objects. The Prasangika reject this idea, arguing that W hat establishes that things exist as only that they are imputable, not that they are imputable with a findable characteristic. According to Tsongkhapa, there is no such common ground or shared perception, while the reliance on characteristic marks implies an inherent existence at the conventional level, which is not in accord with the Madhyamaka point of view. Tsongkhapa holds reductio ad absurdum of essentialist viewpoints to be the most valid method of demonstrating emptiness of inherent existence, and of demonstrating that conventional things do not have a naturally occurring conventional identity. According to Tsongkhapa, if both people in a debate or discussion have a valid understanding of emptiness already, then autonomous syllogistic arguments could be quite effective. However, in a circumstance where one or both parties in a debate or discussion do not hold a valid understanding, the debate should be founded on what the parties accept as valid. 
Hence, it is proper to refute opponents in terms of what they accept. In other words, it is more appropriate to establish a position of emptiness through showing the logical consequences of the incorrect position that the opponent already accepts, than it is to establish emptiness through syllogistic reasoning using premises that the opponent and perhaps even the proponent do not fully or deeply understand. While Tsongkhapa's view met with strong resistance after their introduction, his views came to dominate Tibet in the 17th century, with the Ganden Fodrang government, after the military intervention of the Mongol Lord Gusri Khan. He supported the Gelugpas against the Sangfa family, and put the fifth Dalai Lama in charge of Tibet. Seminal texts which were critical of Tsongkhapa's views, such as Gorampa's critic, ceased to be available and were almost lost. Topic alternate views and criticism According to Dreyfus and McClintock, many other Tibetan commentators have tended to downplay the significance of any differences. Nyingma In the 19th century the concurring Nyingma, Kagyu and Sakya schools joined forces in the Rime movement, in an attempt to preserve their religious legacy against the dominant Gelugpa school. Ju Mipham's commentary on Santarakshita's Madhyamakalankara, the adornment of the middle way, is an example of this new impetus to older strands of Tibetan Buddhism. Mipham presents an alternative interpretation of the Svatantrika Prasangika distinction, in which the emphasis is not on dialectical preferences, consequential reasoning versus syllogistic reasoning, but on the distinction between the approximate ultimate truth and the actual ultimate truth, just like Bhavavivaka did. According to Mipham, the authentic Svatantrika is the approach that emphasizes the approximate ultimate, while the Prasangika approach emphasizes the ultimate in itself, beyond all assertions. His is a gradual approach, starting with sensory experience and the realness of the things perceived through them, which are provisionally accorded a certain existence. From there, the approximate ultimate truth is posited, demonstrating that phenomena cannot possibly exist in the way that they appear invalidating the conventional reality of appearances. From there, the ultimate truth in itself, which is completely free from all zertion, is reached. While the Svatantrikas do make assertions about conventional truth or reality, they stay silent on the ultimate in itself, just like the Prasangikas. According to Ju Mipham, Tsongkhapa's approach was seriously flawed. Tsongkhapa's approach leads students in the right direction but will not lead to the true ultimate until they go further. Mipham further argues that Tsongkhapa's approach is an excellent Svatantrika approach, because of the way he refutes true establishment instead of objects themselves. According to the Padmakara translation group, its presentation of conventional, as distinct from true, existence seems very close to the existence according to characteristics that Bhavya had ascribed to phenomena on the relative level. Sakya The Sakya teacher Gorampa was critical of Tsongkhapa and his views. One of Gorampa's most important and popular works is Distinguishing the Views Tibetan, Wiley, Lta Bai Shan Bide, in which he argues for his view of Madhyamaka. He and other Sakya teachers classify themselves as presenting the freedom from proliferation Tibetan, Wiley, Spros Brawl Madhyamaka. Gorampa does not agree with Tsongkhapa that the Prasangika and Svatantrika methods produce different results, nor that the Prasangika is a higher view. He does also critique the Svatantrika approach as having too much reliance on logic, because in his view the component parts of syllogistic logic are not applicable in the realm of the ultimate. But this critique is constrained to the methodology, and he believed both approaches reach the same ultimate realization. Mainstream Sakyas following Rongtan and Gorampa also hold the position that the distinction between these two schools is merely of a pedagogical nature. With regard to the view of the ultimate truth, there is no difference between them. Topic <laughs> Kagyu. Kagyu and Sakya scholars have argued against the claim that students using Svatantrika do not achieve the same realization as those using the Prasangika approach. According to those critics, there is no difference in the realization of those using the Svatantrika and Prasangika approaches. 
They also argue that the Svatantrika approach is better for students who are not able to understand the more direct approach of Prasangika, but it nonetheless results in the same ultimate realization. Gelugpa <laughs> <laughs> The debate is also not strictly along lineage lines, since there are some non gelugpas who prefer Zha Tsongkhapa's points, while a notable Gelugpa, Jendan Chafal, preferred and wrote about Ju Mipham's interpretation. While Lama Tsongkhapa's approach to Madhyamaka is still viewed as authoritative in the Gelug school of Tibetan Buddhism, the 14th Dali integrates Gelugpa Madhyamaka with Dzogchen views, as did the 5th Dalai Lama. The 14th Dalai Lama has published works like the Gelug, Kagyu tradition of Mahamudra which seem to be influenced by the views of Santaraksita and Pamamsambhava, and contain a blend of Tantric theory, Chittamatra, and Madhyamaka Prasangika. The 14th Dalai Lama also disagrees, echoing sentiments from classical authorities like Lobsang Choki Galtsin 4th Panchen Lama stating that the credible teachers of the various systems of Buddhist philosophy all arrive at the same intended point of realization. However, they also state that this non-denominational position is very difficult to establish through reason. Topic. See also. Equals equals notes. <laughs>